Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Rath, and we're back in Hellion today. So, today's video is actually going to be about a subject that a couple of people have asked me about. And if you look on the forums, you'll actually see that this is a topic that a lot of people are sort of disdainful of in terms of its usefulness or its relevance, but that's mostly because I, I think those people who have a disdainful attitude towards it simply just don't understand how to effectively do it. And that, of course, is the subject of mining in Hellion. Now, most people who play Hellion have sort of a raider mentality. They look for things to aggressively salvage because from their perspective, it is a greater return on investment in terms of materials and costs. And it's a faster satisfaction of getting what they want. And these things, they are what they are. You can't really avoid the fact that a lot of people are not going to go out for mining because if you do it half-assed, you're going to end up expending more resources than you gain. So today we're going to be going through what you need for mining, bare minimum, what is optimal, and the techniques and such that you may wish to employ to improve your rate of return. Now these are my personal stances on these things based on my own trial and experimentation, so they're by no means definitive, but they are fairly well thought out. They are proven, at least from my perspective, uh, for being useful and applicable across the board. So they're not they're not without their value. So, but your results may vary. Your your decisions or what you find as acceptable, usable, um, or otherwise definably okay are going to be to your own opinion. So right now, what we're doing is I'm in warp on my way to the station around Everest Station. All right, that's a, an industrial station. You can also do this for the stations that are around Bether, the, the two automated refineries. They will have the things that you need as well, with a few exceptions. Primarily, the thing that we need right now is resource containers. That means the orange containers and the, uh, the little handheld containers. Those are the two items that are of the highest importance to us right now. So what I've done is I'm um, just going to show you what I've got equipment wise. I've just brought bare minimum so that I have plenty of room for stuff and I've got a spare warp cell just in case. But for the most part my ship is stripped down. It has virtually nothing in it in case I lose it. Uh, such as if I get ambushed by somebody else here. I'm hoping that won't be the case. The, the server just had a reset, so the population should be fairly low at this time of night. But, you know, that notwithstanding, I still could run into somebody in this area. And I'm going to go ahead and do a quick nav scan while I'm here, because we're going to be passing through the debris field on our way. And that's less than pleasant, but... Okay, so somebody's got their base or something over here. Yeah. Alright, let's go ahead and get out of the... Oh! Yep, we're in the debris. Alright. So the facility is only a few hundred meters to our left here. So we're going to go ahead and... That was actually a really nice landing for such a far warp. Now, one of the things that you always should keep in mind, and that I see a lot of people make mistakes with in this game, is how to conserve... Holy sh... That was close. That almost hit us. Uh, is how to conserve their resources when they're warping around. Uh, I've actually talked with several newer players recently who have found themselves stranded because they've been warping around and have run out of warp fuel. 
And there is actually a couple of tricks to that that I'm going to go over when we leave this station uh, and make our way back to... Oh, that's another big one. And make our way back to the actual... to our actual station, our home space. Because we want... First thing I'm doing is... Oh, jeez. This one's got a lot of big stuff in it. That is frightening. We're taking some damage, but what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to shield my ship from the debris cloud. Okay, let's zero this out here. Now, obviously, this has been raided probably multiple times at this point. Can I cut this? Okay, let's match speeds. Cut our rotation. And now let's maneuver ourselves in close because we want the station to shield us from hits like that. It won't be able to perfectly shield us, but if we do a good job of getting in close here, then we should be alright. Now, the fact that there's no other ships around is helpful. It means that there's a fairly high chance that we won't have anybody around us at the moment, but if those people in the other stations are in the nearby space are paying attention or checking their scanners, they may decide to come screw with us because it's a lot shorter trip for them than it is for us. So if they've, if they've got somebody sitting in a ship just randomly scanning, they could technically have seen us on our way in and have decided to raid us. Uh, that's part of the reason why whenever I'm going to one of these stations, I always, always, and I highly recommend that you don't bring anything you're not willing to lose. So I have some, some partially filled warp cells, uh, very little in the way of personal equipment, and I'm basically going with the idea of... Oh, that is a lot of damage. I need to fix that. That was That's too big of a hit for us. That could easily turn into a hull breach. So we're going to fix that now. Okay, so because we're shielded behind the station, we're going to have a lot lower chance of being hit by debris. So we're going to take this opportunity, put that away, to go ahead and get into the station here. Oops, somebody's cut the gravity in here. All right. Interesting choice. We're going to go ahead and sort that out real quick. All right, gravity controls are on. And just to be safe, we're going to close this door. Uh, part of the reason is those doors can't be closed. Oh, that was a bad choice. Uh, those doors can't be opened from the outside. So it gives us a potentially safe area to operate in. So we're going to take these and get them upstairs. And I'm not worried about this station falling apart or anything. So we're just going to check everything we can within reason and limit. Ooh, EVA, EVA equipment, that's even better. All right, so we're gonna put that there and put that there. Did I take it? Yeah, I got a crowbar. These crowbars aren't really all that useful, so I don't really care about them. Uh, but somebody's been stockpiling them. These helmets might be of value, though. So we're just gonna real quick do a sweep of the station and we're going to move everything into this room so that we can extract it very quickly. Again, we want to be careful because we don't know when somebody else might stop by uh, and we don't know whether or not they will be hostile to us when they do, when or if they do. So. It's always good to assume 
that you're not alone. Okay, somebody's already opened this up. Nothing there. Oops, get up. Come on. Come on, get up. Okay, get in here and get the gravity. Alright. Anything in here? Nope, okay. These tunnels, you have to check these tunnels because they are they are a spawn point for these stations. What is going on? Why do we have no, no gravity in here? Okay, ooh. Uh, a Prometheus EBA pack. We'll take that. Let's not get distracted here. Okay, somebody has gone to great lengths to try and make this station very inhospitable. Which is interesting in and of its own right. Okay. Alright, we want these. The blue ones are not as important. Uh, don't get me wrong, they do have a value to us, but they are not... Ooh, we can get a full EVA suit, and that will be awesome. So let's go ahead and go back and put that where we can easily extract it. There was another part there that I just saw. So we will come back for that. But we're going to go ahead and put everything that we've got that we want to get out of here on these shelves here. Alright, we'll keep that one because it's got oxygen. Put that one down. Can we put those on there? Nope, okay. So again, we're going to be pulling just about everything we can out of here because even if we can't use the particular item, they can always be scrapped for more raw materials that we can make use of. And again, always assume that you're not alone, that somebody else will be here and will be here soon to wreck your day. Alright, so... Ooh, an enhanced servo motor. That's always a good, a good bargain. Alright, so there's some more packs there, some helmets, some suits. Not anything that I want to grab just yet. I want to try and fill up as much as I can here. Okay, it looks like plenty of parts. Let's go for the stuff that's most valuable first. Take the, take the little resource can. What are you doing? Now the reason that these various resource cans are the, the most important items is because in order to do mining, you need these for the drill. But a lot of people don't realize how much of these you need. In a fully functional mining operation, you're going to be using your ship as your, as your sort of waypoint as you switch out batteries, switch out these cans, and that means that you're going to have to use warp cells to get wherever you're going and you're going to need to have some kind of plan when it comes to what you're getting. Alright, so we're getting these all out. Let's go ahead and put this guy away because we don't need him right now either. He can go in there. Keep our pistol out. Because you never know, like I said. Always expect that somebody is about to ruin your day. So we're going to go in on all of this here. 
And again, like I said, the, the most important part of this right now is these resource cans. They are paramount to your ability to do the mining that you want to do. The suits are going to help. Uh, the various other things that you can eventually scrap for for parts. Why is it? Oh, because I'm full on those. Okay. Right, let's put that back down for a second. And let's fill up on stuff that does not take up one of those spots. Uh, oh, these are these are good. Fried electronics are very good to grab uh, because those will save us when we need to produce some items. We'll go ahead and take these enhanced catalysts, this enhanced resource injector. Doesn't look like there are any other parts there. Uh, let's check up top and check down below. Anything down below first? Uh, oh, yep, and it's just one of the things that we need, too, so we're going to have to grab it. You can prioritize things that are not the, the components that you need, uh, but generally the cans are the most important part. So don't be afraid to absolutely run yourself through getting all of those. Now I'm kind of hoping that we'll come out of this debris storm at some point because it's going to make moving things around like I don't really care about this. Get rid of that. I want to secure these. Let's keep, let's uh, dump all of our parts here. So you can go there. You can go there. Resource injector. Keep the work cell. So, okay, and keep the fried electronics. And let's dump off these guys. Although, let's see, what does this one got? Oxygen. So we'll go ahead and top off. Oh, there's some more fried electronics there. That will be good for us. Let's go ahead and uh, grab more of these. Place them down. Now your ship has roughly about 60 spots that you could conceivably place some of those resource cans and a variety of other parts that you may need for your harvesting operation. So it's important to keep that firmly in your mind when you're looking at what you can bring with you to go mining. Okay. One, two. No, pick up that gun. Don't you do that. A big moron. Take that, that. Okay, let's go. Again, a station like this, you may not actually be able to salvage everything out of it, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't try. Uh, you know, depending on how crowded your server is, it might actually be folly to attempt to fill up on everything that you potentially could. Alright, so we've got a lot of stuff in here. Let's, uh, let's limit these to full suits. So we've got a pack, take this, put it there. So that's a full suit there. So we can ditch 
this guy here. All right, we'll come back. Take our gun back out. Was the side doors open on this one? I don't remember. Oh, there's another fire extinguisher. Let's make sure these doors are closed. Okay, they are both closed. Okay, that limits the the numbers oh, the number of ways that people can ingress to the station, and that makes things easier for me to manage. Okay, so um, we'll skip that one for the moment. Take that. Don't need that, but I will take that. Take another one of those because those are always helpful. Definitely take one of those. And let's check here. Now there's plenty of stuff that shows up in these tunnels, so uh, it's worthwhile to look. Okay, got those there. Oh, it's another blue one, but we'll take it. All right, so we're full on what we can carry that way. Uh, let's. Okay, don't need that as much as we need that. So we'll take it. We'll move over here and take a look. Another resource injector would be nice. Wait, was there a catalyst there? Did I? No. Okay. For some reason it showed catalyst, and I thought that it maybe it meant that I had found one, but that was not the case. Okay, so we're gonna real quick check in here. Whoa, no, 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 don't go out there. All right, so the debris storm is over, which is great for us. That means we can start getting to work, but we still have to be relatively careful. We still have the potential of somebody joining us here. Uh, at an inopportune time. Don't need any extra welding torches or anything. That's a battery, I don't know. You know what, I, I have a lot of batteries, but I'm gonna take that one anyway, just in case. Okay. So lots of suits, lots of tanks. And lots more. Oh, and another catalyst. So we'll take that. Now you can't take the parts out of their system, so that's unfortunate, but uh, it's the nature of the process here. So there are four canisters there, so we have to come back for those. Ooh, that's a nice uh, EVA pack as well. But we're gonna keep we're gonna keep pushing on here. We want to make sure that we do not let ourselves become caught by this. Now, somebody might try to steal our ship, but I've got it locked up, so there's a fairly good chance that if they try, they will fail. Let's put the gun away for the moment. Let's see if we can put some more of these up here. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Placing more and more. Why do those ones not allow it, but these ones do? Hmm. Question for another day. All right, so one of the things is also I have a fairly good collection of these cans on my uh, on my home station already. So the collection that we're getting here should be, with with some minor exceptions, should be enough to cover us for our needs. So let's uh, let's take that guy real quick. Let's take one. What color are you? I'm colorblind, so it's hard to look at these things. Three, okay. Take that one and let's go. Okay. So the next step 
in this little silly process of ours. Now part of the part of the nice part is that these cans when you get them they come preloaded with minerals uh, which is why a lot of people look disdainfully towards uh, harvesting resources because oh, oh Jesus that scared the hell out of me kicking around that helmet I was like what the hell was that noise drop that one as well uh, you know, since you can get all these resources, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. That should be enough. I wonder if I can find one extra suit that might make things a little bit easier for me down the road here. find one more suit then I'll have two EVAs and I can use those for my own needs the the big thing about the EVA suits is that they have an impressively high O2 pack so like when you get the, that pack on you you can you can go for a very long time without having to recharge your your oxygen. Oh, we're all full on those too. Okay. It doesn't look like there's any more. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drop this. Well, actually, I'm gonna use this one first. And then we're gonna drop it. So let's take two of those, one of those, and a suit. Okay, I think that we've gotten everything that we need and or desire out of this station without being unreasonable. Uh, if we wanted to, we could probably take the time to strip this station completely. But it's generally not going to be worth the effort. Drop, drop, drop. Okay, so let's go open the door, get our gun out. Alright, there's our ship. Alright, and radar doesn't show anybody else here yet. So we can put the gun away. Always remember to cycle your radar when you're out and about. Oh! Damn, that's a lot of damage. She has taken some abuse. No, we've got to repair that now. That is not an acceptable thing, because that's probably a hull breach at this point. Okay. Alright, so we're in. And again lock your doors so other people can't get into your ship. It may sound like a silly thing, but it will save your life far more than you realize. Okay. Alright, so we didn't get a hull breach. That's good. That exterior damage might have been a, a real problem if we... Ooh! Sorry, I just hit my mic. Okay, so... Close this one down. Now we're going to do the part that I consider to be the most risky when it comes to this. And that is the transfer. So we're going to take control of our ship. We're going to break our match. And we're going to reposition ourselves. Now normally I would have positioned myself like this from the start. 
just to save some time, but with all the debris flying around. But it didn't end up actually protecting us at all, which is kind of annoying. I've been hoping that I could minimize my damage. Alright, so now what we're doing is we're going to match and we're going to get close. And match. Alright, what's our. We're pretty damn close. Take a close view on that. Okay. Let's get a little bit closer. Tiny bit. Okay, and almost in the door here, and match. All right. This will give us a strategic advantage and a little bit of cover. Now, again, I've got my doors locked for a reason, so don't forget that. Shut the doors because you want to keep people out. Here, let's see if there's a lock on the store. There is not. So, all right. So this room takes a very, very long time to depressurize. So we're going to get in here and we're going to put whatever we can out of our inventory because we're going to need as much room as possible to transfer stuff around. So now we're going to do the scariest part of this, which is depressurizing this room and opening the exterior door. Now while that is going on, normally I would have somebody up in the, the crew section on the controls watching to see if anybody showed up or checking the sensors to see if anybody was maneuvering this way from a long range. Uh, these are all things that are legitimate concerns that you should be paying attention to. Okay, and there, and there, and there. Now, I'm not closing my visor yet because this room takes so long to depressurize that I would actually waste more fuel than, or more oxygen then it would do anything good for me. Let's see, can I put one here? No. Okay, I can put it there. Oh, we got some damage there to deal with. Alright, we've repaired that. And I'm going to lay this down as well, because we're not going to need it right now. Get our gun out, because again, you never know what you're going to face. And as soon as this hits oh, um, 0.4, I think we're going to go ahead and... Sorry, taking a sip there. We're going to go ahead and uh, put our visor down once this turns red to let us know that the air is becoming unbreathable. Okay. So now that we're almost set, we have to prepare ourselves for the chance that this may go badly. Because there could, in the time it takes to do this, there could conceivably be somebody out there waiting for us. And that's never any fun. So. Come on. 
See, a patient raider will wait for you to do this, will wait for you to go to one of these stations, and then they'll try to get you. Or they'll wait for you to go to one of these stations, and then try to catch you on your way home, to track you back to your base, so that they can then warp to you. Both of those are legit, and they can be very, very... Ooh, that is a bit lower than I had expected. Let's go ahead and get out and see if we can back this up a little bit here. This is normally why I do this kind of thing with a two-man group. Because with a two-man team, you can have uh, somebody spotting and telling you, you're too low. Uh, and it works out really well. So because we've got the door open and depressurized, I can't go back in that way without spending all that extra time, again, pressurizing and, and closing that bay, which would mean, again, doing the same thing in reverse the other way around. It's never really uh, all that fun of an option. Now the nice thing is that you can actually start the depressurization and the door opening from the outside of that room, which is from the elevator, elevator shaft. You can go in and basically tell it to depressurize. Close that door, thank you. Pressurize. So what we're going to do is we're going to scooch the ship back just a little bit and we're going to bring it up just a tiny bit before we rematch speeds so that we can basically run in and out of that cargo bay without getting ourselves screwed over. Okay, and again, always, always check. You never know when a raider is going to show up. And these symbol, these uh, these displays do not update until you actually get in the chair. Okay, so we're going to back up just a tiny bit and up just a tiny bit. A little bit more up. Now that we have the door down, if I go down here, I should be able to see where the door is lining up. Or not. Not able to get in the front there. That's weird. Ouch. What are you doing? Get up. I think there is going to be good. Alright, lock it up. Okay, close the door. Depressurize. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Oh, wrong button. I meant to hit the J for my jetpack, not the H for my helmet. Okay, let's see how that lines up. Yeah, we probably could have pulled forward there at that point, but I don't think that that's such a wise idea. Alright, so this is going to work out pretty good for us. So first things first, all the parts. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, battery, ten. Any other parts that would work for this. No, okay. 
So next is the critical elements. So two, three, four. That covers all of it. Okay. We're going to just jump right across and start stacking everything up. So one, two, three, four. Now these blue ones are actually tier two. So they are very useful to us because they can upgrade even further the components that we're using on our station and get us even higher amounts of uh, of efficiency. So they'll they'll further reduce like uh, with the catalyst, they'll further increase the amount of output from whatever power system they're put in. So, uh, if that happens to be like a uh, a solar panel, then I'll get better than a 50% boost in how much power is being generated. Uh, or a reactor, same thing. Uh, the okay, so these little guys can go right here for now. Okay. Jump. All right, we're back. Take a quick look. See if anybody else is coming in. Okay. Two. Three, four. Oh, that's five. Okay. That's fine. Okay, keep them going. You want to try and make this as quickly, uh, as quick of an operation as possible because, again, you never know when that first raider is going to show up and ruin your day. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Okay, so don't sprint across the second gap. Oh, we're going to fall. Ugh. Ouch. That probably hurt. Okay, so walk back, but sprint out. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Keep them going, keep them going. And you can suddenly see why people don't like mining in this game, because it requires a, a considerable amount of effort. And when something's easier than the, the basic amount of effort, they'll often opt for that instead because it is easier. Okay, so I think we actually have two EVA suits, which will be absolutely awesome. Okay, and in we go. Now, let's just get these all squared away here. So that's all of the cans that we have in there that we were able to find. And that's least, that's all of the orange ones. So now everything else here is bonus. So we're going to go ahead and take that and that. Oh wait, we got that can. I didn't I didn't remember that. One. Can I... Let's place you right there. Place the pack there. And can we place the helmet there? Yep. Okay. Perfect. And close that one up. Okay. So that takes care of all of that. Okay. So where was the... So another one. Is that an EVA suit? It is. Okay. 
So another EVA suit, another EVA, another EVA pack, another EVA helmet, another EVA <coughs> suit, and then let's take one of these blue containers with us. I'm also going to take the uh, the fire extinguishers because uh, I only have two of those, and they could potentially become very useful. So we'll go ahead and put the other suit up there, the other pack up there, and the other helmet down here. Okay. Next can. Okay, let's take this a little slow because I want my radar to kick in. Okay. Alright, nobody nobody still has arrived, so we're still we're still good. So take that, take that. And you may be wondering why I'm not really all that interested in the drills, and that's because they're a dime a dozen. Uh, let's drop that. The drills, unfortunately, are generally not worth your effort because you can get tons of them. I mean, you get a, you get a fresh one every time you cycle a ship. So there's no, I mean, well, I, I could take them purely for the purpose of breaking them down. Uh, and that might be worth it, so I might, I might actually do that. But I think we're going to do this in two sessions here, because uh, one, we're, we're running a little long on time for this. And I may end up cutting some of this out. enough for me. Uh, but this is this is the prep work that has to go into doing any kind of mining because if you don't you're setting yourself up prematurely for failure. Uh, there's a fire extinguisher spot right over here so we're gonna go ahead and drop that on. And then we will use, uh, let's do the ones up here fire extinguisher. You can see the, the racks in here are very useful for this whole process. So you can you can get a lot out of this if you just take the time to do it. Uh, oh, I still got three of those in hand, so I need to remember that. Uh, let's see here. What else do I want here? All right, screw it. We're going to take the drills. Take whatever we can get at this point, because everything else will just be fuel for the refinery to chew through and make stuff with. Uh, and that's that's really the benefit of like totally ravaging these stations, is that you can simply gather up a ton of stuff and if it's not the things that you need if you've got a fabricator which you know if you've been watching my videos and been paying attention you should basically have by now then you should be able to convert whatever you need from the raw materials that you're picking up All right. So unfortunately, those little those little triple shells. I wish I could change the shelves around to what I needed, because those little triple shells are not all that beneficial to me. All right, so we'll we'll put together two extra suits because you always want to try and make sure that you're getting extra suits in case of when you die that you'll have extra suits in your station to replace the ones that you've lost. All right, so we got a bunch of junk here. We got another drill. I can leave that behind. I'm not too concerned about it. Let's go ahead and grab another suit, which should be right here. Oh, oh, that that's an EVA suit. Okay, well then that is a deal. I will take that. No problem. Based on how long it's taken us to be here we have actually caused a respawn, uh, which is kind of awesome. OK, 
Okay. Toss you up there. Take a quick look down there. Nope. Okay. Now it's time to keep moving. Uh, nope, that's not the suit that we want. We want a standard suit. Which is that. And that's just so that we can add more. Yep, see there's more parts spawning. So we're definitely going to get uh, a second run through here. But we're going to be more selective the second time around. Now if you have two people in your crew, this can be like a super efficient process where, you know, you're just grabbing everything and, let's see, alright, I don't need that one anymore, it's empty. Uh, let's put it there. That's nitro, that's empty. Which one of you has some oxygen? Oh, you do. Always keep watching for somebody coming, because they will they will sneak up on you if they can. Let's see, no guns. Another EVA suit. Uh, the EVA suits and the packs are actually worth taking if you have the room, not to use per se, but for the uh, the parts. Uh, in terms of things to salvage. Okay, we'll take that. I don't need that, but I'll take it. Need the resource injectors if there are any. Nope. Okay. Oh, are you kidding me? More? All right. Two, three, four, five. I will happily take all of those. The respawn rates can be very generous, but at the same time, that also may mean that somebody else has entered the local space. Like that. We may be... we may be... Okay, nobody's in there yet. But that doesn't mean that they won't be. The fact that somebody's saying hello might very well mean that we are out of time and have to go. But we've made a significant grab of resources. Okay, check the habitat and then get out. Because we've got everything that we're going to be able to get out of this without risking too much. Oh, resource injector, we'll take that. Take that. This is the habitat where I saw those other cans. Take that. See, it's all blue cans. Don't need those. Nothing here. Okay, check the other side, and then get the oh, orange can. Nothing there. Fire extinguisher. Any parts? Resource injector. Take it. All right, we are out of time, and we have pushed our luck way too far at this point, so we need to get out, and we need to get out fast. Take that one. Take it. Okay. That 
that's the wrong way. Shoot, come on. Focus Wrath, get out of here. Get out fast before somebody finds you. This is this is the existential horror of playing as a solo player, is that everybody is your enemy. There is there is nobody that's on your side. So you have to basically treat everybody like a, a, a massive threat. Because if you don't, the one that you don't is the one that will kill you. Alright, we've got everything out that we need to get out in this very second. So rather than closing our our door up, we're gonna go we're gonna opt for the faster solution. Which is to break our orbit. of this station and get on a trajectory moving away from it so that if anybody does show up they'll have to either choose to chase us down or go after the station. Pressurize. Alright, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, so we're going to drop down real quick here, or drop down real quick here, and now we can control this from the outside, so we're going to close the door. And start pressurizing it. Now we can go up while it's doing its thing. Take off our helmet. Oops, I just unlocked that. Alright, door is locked. We are rock and roll ready to go. And let's get out of here. Okay, take control of the ship. And again, move away by three directions. There, there, and then thrust upward. Alright, we are now away from that station. And we're ready to go back to our, to our base. Now, there is one thing I want to cover with you. Uh, for people who have trouble navigating, there's a trick that you can do when you're returning, especially from the orbit of a moon, to, say, your base, which may be, you know, for most people, that'll probably be in orbit around uh, Bether. So we're going to say, okay, here's Bether, and my base has got a really crazy, crazy orbit, but we're all the way over there. Now, to spend the fuel to jump that distance may be too expensive for us, so instead we're going to add a custom orbit. We're going to pitch it at an angle here. And rotate it that way so that the apoplepsis is out where we need it to be. While the periapsis is fairly low. And now let's rotate this this way. Pitch it a little more down here. And then set it there. And then where's the little dot? Okay, move the little dot right there. And warp to. Okay, it's moving away, which is perfect. Too low. Alright, because you pay for fuel based on time and warp this warp will get us what we want for the cheapest amount of fuel. Alright, now this does cost you uh, the 
this does cost you time because once I get into this orbit we'll watch through the nav uh, as we go you'll see that uh, once we get into this orbit we're gonna just sit there for a very long time So this is this is less than a two minute burn, which takes up very little fuel for me. But once I get into this orbit, I will be able to just sit and coast into a closer orbit around Bether. This is what I call a free return orbit. If you're if you're super light on fuel, set this as your goal, because if you watch, here's my orbit, my orbital path. I'm breaking orbit from ever station so my my path is sort of meandering out into a weird sort of angle but now see it starts to kind of go all squiggly because I've now changed my my sphere of influence so now I'm gonna go ahead and get on a path that works for me And then we can just sit here, because over time we'll continue to progress up the top of this orbit around to Bether. These longer elliptical orbits will save you fuel if you have the time to burn. All right. Now I'm not going to actually stick around with this one because I've got plenty of fuel, so I can easily make the jump, relax, and find my my station and make a second jump. But I wanted to show this to you as a, a tool in your bag of tricks as a pilot, because half of this game is about your ability to pilot and navigate in this system. So being able to use tricks like this, because I used maybe 10% of a fuel cell to make a very short jump, so I could even have made this jump without reactor power. So now I'm on that orbit. And so let, let's say I want to warp to my station. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In an hour, I'll be there. Two hours there. Three hours there. So, I mean, if you have the time to waste, you can use. Let's see where this would be here. At three hours, yeah, that, that would be the the trip. So when you're doing this, this can save you fuel if you have the time. You can actually, if you're if you're really, really adventurous, you can actually use this trick to get to other planets in the system without the use of a uh, singularity cell detonator. It takes forever, and you might want to just, you know, go do something else. Like, uh, the, the most common trick that I'll do with it is that I'll go ahead and attach a life support module to the back of my ship for a long haul like this with an airlock attached to it, and then I'll have my ship make a short jump into a... a orbit around the star that I know will intersect at some point with the planet that I want. Or at least will come close enough that making a second jump won't be so massively expensive. And then I'll just make the jump, the short jump. Once my ship is cruising, I'll get out of my ship, go to the module that I'm dragging, and log off. Go get into a cryo cryopod and log, log the heck off. That way, you can make the trip, and worst case scenario, you wake up and, you know, since you don't set your spawn there, you're just sleeping in there. Worst case scenario is you come back, find that you're too far out to make a jump, and you have to uh, decide to abandon your ship, which is fine. But these are these are these are tricks that you should very much consider adding into your bag of, of of tricks. So now I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. And I'm going to retask with warping to my base. 
Uh, are we passing through anything in there? No? Okay. Get a little close to an asteroid, but nothing to worry about. Okay, and we'll go ahead and burn up the rest of the fuel that we're using here. See how much of a difference in fuel that is? All right, we'll go ahead and initialize that and make our jump. So in our next video, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to record that almost right after this one. Once I get done setting up, uh, we'll go ahead and take the time to actually do some mining. And so I'll walk you through all the basics of how to mine, what the, what the final setup I have for my work on this is, and how it impacts that. So if you've liked this video, please leave a like. Uh, if you have something to add to it, please leave a comment. Uh, subscribe if you're enjoying the content, because it does let me know I'm doing a good job. And I'm really, really kind of pushing for the, uh, the, the point where I hit 100 subscribers. I'm, I'm looking to try and do something really nice, like maybe a, a subscriber live stream where I'll set up and then you know advertise basically what server I'm at and have everybody bring over their modules and we can make a big sort of public server or not public server, a, a big sort of uh, community station with lots and lots of uh, parts so you know it may choke out your computer but we'll see what we can do anyway until next time I'm Rath and I will catch you on the flip side and we'll do some mining on the next video